Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 27th, and right now we are looking at the visible satellite imagery. We've got this frontal system out over the coastal waters. You can see it producing lightning. We got monsoon moisture in place, bringing precipitation, thunderstorm activity this morning, and this will be lifting across the region here as we go through the next couple of days. Then we'll take a look at what is to come through the extended forecast. Where did the heat go? Is it going to return? All good questions. We'll dive into those details here in a moment. Mid-level water vapor loop does a good job of showing the features there out there and why this lightning is occurring across some portions of western Oregon this morning. Again, this will be moving northbound as we go through the next day or two. But this is the main event here out over the open waters. You can see the lightning associated with this system. And this will be bringing more widespread lightning potential across some of the Pacific Northwest here. Still some pretty good disagreement on where the best dynamics are going to set up. We've also got some very heavy rainfall across portions of Idaho near the Oregon border there as well. I'll show you that here in the excessive rainfall outlook here in a moment. But look at the emigrant fire there yesterday. My goodness, look at this fire just absolutely raging. And through the overnight hours, you can see the hot spot just ongoing. This thing was producing a pyrocumulus cloud. It was kicking off lightning just by its own accord. And uh, again, we've had so many lightning strikes across the Cascades here the last couple of days of Oregon up into Washington, and no doubt other fires are being created. But yeah, look at the smoke just pouring off that with the hundreds of lightning strikes associated with what went through the day yesterday. And if I back this up, this is the fire here. This is the forecast for the smoke today. And I don't need... You don't need me to tell you here that we're dealing with some pretty hazy skies out there. The Bear Gulch fire is still producing smoke across a lot of western Washington. And the Emigrant fire there is producing huge amounts as that pushes off to the east now as well. So yeah, still dealing with these smoky skies, at least for the time being. And also just kind of driving on the point that we do have the chance for some, uh, again, some fires developing here with the thunderstorms as we go through the day today. High risk does continue to be the case for NW1 and NW2, NW5 and NW8 as we go through the day taking. You see where those different locations are now the storm prediction center already a little bit of an issue with this because you can see we've had thunderstorms outside of the general category area here today but it does include western washington as well keep that in the back of your mind and it probably should again tomorrow it does We'll take a look at that in some detail here in a moment. But again, with the isolated dry thunderstorm potential here, you can kind of see the Storm Prediction Center does have much of Washington State included in that risk. Now, if you want a nice affordable home weather station, this is the one to get. It's very fun. It detects lightning. I know all of you guys have bought one of these recently. You're going to have some fun with this system or these thunderstorms here moving up across the region over the next few days. Click on that link down below to save 10% off. It does a lot more as well. It's got an ultrasonic anemometer, haptic rain gauge there. It's also solar powered and why it was very fun now looking at the european model there so you can kind of see the little subtle features right there that's the system we're dealing with here over the next couple of days let's hope we can get some meaningful rainfall out of that and keep the fire starts to a minimum with those lightning strikes but then the main event is right here it starts to approach the coastline as we go through the day on friday and now where this sets up is going to mean everything as far as who gets what because this has a potential for a much more widespread lightning event here west of the cascades but there's still some big uncertainty on just how far south this convection is going to start before it swoops north across the region and back out towards the northwest across Vancouver Island. So taking a little bit of a closer look here, what is coming today? This is the area where they're getting the thunderstorm activity here now across northwest Oregon. And you can kind of see that vorticity moving up across portions of southern Washington, then across the Puget Sound. Eastern Washington getting some rainfall out of this as well. And then as we go through the day on Thursday, we're still going to be dealing with some of that precipitation before that lifts northbound. We warm up a bit on Friday, but then the next system quickly starts to approach. Now, total precipitation in inches. Scroll through this morning. You see the European at least kind of hinting at that thunderstorm activity today and uh, through this morning anyway uh, for some of Northwest Oregon. You can kind of see the Cascades start to pick up on some of that precipitation there as well. We scroll through the day today towards tonight. Some rainfall for eastern Washington, but the further south you get towards some of eastern Oregon, the Idaho border, there's some heavier rainfall set up as we go through today and tonight. And as we go through this evening, kind of see some of this activity move out over the Puget Sound and towards Bellingham up there across you know, the San Juans for Vancouver Island and the Olympics. You could get some lightning strikes associated with this activity and as we go through tonight and then tomorrow you see additional band of precipitation kind of deformation band setting up here across northwest washington as we go on into the day tomorrow and then we start to look at the next system coming up here and kind of see it swooping up out of the south not a lot of precipitation associated with it but that could bring more of a widespread lightning event 
But again, there's some big disagreement on just how far south the convection is going to start. Is it going to completely miss Oregon? Is it going to start over Seattle and move north? Or is it going to start north of Seattle? We still don't quite know just yet. So a wider look at things here. The monsoon moisture is in place. And if I put this into motion, you can kind of see it bubbling and moving around here. And you can kind of see it move back out over to the northwest across western Washington. Next system starts to approach. And it's going to be still working with some of that monsoon moisture as we go on into this weekend. But you can kind of see that negatively tilt a bit of the negatively tilted trough here as we go on into the day Saturday. Is it going to be enough to bring a thunderstorm around here to Seattle and down towards Portland? Uh, all good questions. Things we have to answer over the next couple of days. The high resolution models should start being in range tomorrow. So those are going to be of great help. Uh, if we look at the European ensemble mean though, and uh, looking at precipitation, this is we, as we go through the day today, you can kind of see that moving back up across tonight. Thunderstorm potential will exist with some of this activity as we go all the way through tomorrow morning and through the day tomorrow. Then we go off in towards Friday. And as we scroll through Friday, the ensembles do have this area here would be convection and probably pretty prolific lightning producing convection at that as we go through the day on Saturday. Cascades yet again. Is this going to get Olympia, Tacoma, and Seattle? Man, it's right on the borderline there, but you can see it come across the Kitsap Peninsula would be Island, San Juan's, Bellingham, probably the further north you are, the better chances of sealing this lightning activity as you go on into Saturday and then eventually Saturday night. And then there could be another round of precipitation that moves across as well. We won't worry about that just yet. Still waiting to get some of the high resolution models in here for the first wave. Now, look at the North American model as well. We'll scroll through here and you can see the band set up as we go through Thursday. You see that across some of the Puget Sound there and up towards Snohomish, Skagit County. And then we go off in towards Friday and then you see this area here. This shows a convection starting a bit further south. So it makes me wonder what the North American high resolution model is going to show when we look at this tomorrow morning. But you can kind of see that precipitation start maybe Portland North up towards Seattle as we go through the day Saturday. That would be convective and that would have lightning associated with it as we went through the day Saturday. So soccer games, you're running errands on Saturday. Watch out for that lightning activity moving up across the area. But we'll get a clearer picture tomorrow. Now, looking at the North American model, you can clearly see the system off the coastline right there. And we're looking here at 700 millibars. And what you want to see is that negatively tilted portion of the trough. And there it is right here. And it does show the potential, at least probably northwest Oregon, north brown across western Washington, Vancouver Island, and southwest BC for that more widespread lightning show here as we go on into the day on Saturday. Now, I also want to drive on this point there for Northeast Oregon, Idaho, as we go through the day today. That's some pretty heavy rainfall falling out there and enough that they put out a slight risk for the potential of flash flooding. So, yeah, there, there you go. Now, this is day two, marginal, and that's kicking off to the east a little bit. So uh, this is total precipitation in inches on a last night's European model, and you can kind of see that heavy rainfall. I just wanted to drive home that point. Some of these totals are coming up over an inch, inch and a half of precipitation, and probably higher amounts locally there across portions of Idaho. Now, daily max temperature. So this is Seattle today. And again, with the monsoon moisture and the clouds across the region, it's just going to be a difficult forecast to predict what kind of high temperatures we're going to get. That's just the way it goes. So Seattle shows maybe upper 70s towards the 80s. You can see the Willamette Valley, mid and upper 80s showing up as we go through Thursday. And again, there's going to be a deformation hanging out. I don't know if we're going to get the 84 up. What is this Arlington up here? I don't know if we're going to get there because there's going to be a lot of clouds out there, which could suppress these temperatures by 10 or more degrees from what we're showing right there. But look at Portland showing back up towards 90. I don't know if we're going to get the mid 80s for Seattle on Thursday as well. But Friday looks pretty warm across the region. That's getting pretty darn right warm for Seattle. Some upper 70s showing up in advance of this next system. You can see eastern Washington, Tri-Cities, mid 90s. Boise 87 bend somewhere around 90 degrees as well and then we go Saturday as the system is moving up across the region it's going to of course suppress temperatures along with it and then we go Sunday Monday and what happens after that man it's just a crap show at this point I'll show you what I mean here in a moment but look at Seattle Tacoma still some pretty warm temperatures showing up and I'll show you why that is here in a bit but if you look at Moses Lake you can kind of see on the GFS we're still dealing with pretty warm conditions here all the way on into the early portion of September now let's take a look at that so I, I we're looking at the European artificial intelligence as of last night on the left versus itself versus yesterday morning so again 500 millibar heights there's our main show off the coastline there it's approaching there and not too 
too much change here over the last, you know, what, 18 hours, the difference between these two models. And then you can kind of see this low get right over top of Western Washington, some of Vancouver Island. It starts doing the funky chicken right here. You expect that thing to swing through, but it does not. It starts to retrograde there. And you can see some of the ridging building back in here as we go through next week so that could bring some warmth as we go through next week but really that trough is a little bit too close and that's really going to be wreaking havoc here as we start to look off into the extended forecast but you can kind of see that ridge does get re-established a bit as we go through next week and then we start to go off in the extended forecast and you think see things really start to diverge i mean look at last night's run you got this trough versus ridging much warmer here would be on the right but yeah big model disagreement as we go through the first week of September or so. So, you know, keep that in the back of your mind. The forecast is going to be fine-tuned, no doubt. And the Artificial Intelligence Ensemble mean, we'll put this into motion. There goes the upper level low, and again, it kind of even shows the retrograde in the ensembles there. The ridging does build back up, so that would definitely warm us back up as we went through next week. But what happens after that? Good guess. That's not much help. Just kind of shows some kind of zonal flow there as the ensemble smooth things out. So a six to 10 day temperature outlook through the first week above normal for the Pacific Northwest. Kind of an interesting signal there as we go through the first week. I don't know if I believe that just yet. We'll continue to watch that. And if you want to check out the Patreon page, if there's any additional issues with the YouTube page, which I do not foresee, come here because I have total and independent control of the Patreon page. So you'll be able to get updates and see what is going on with the channel. This is also a great way to donate some of your hard-earned money. Patreon lets the creators keep about 88 to 90% of whatever money you do donate to the channel and to help support the channels out here. So, yep. Anyway, just thought I'd throw that in there as well. But yeah, one more wide look at things. There's the Hawaiian Islands bottom left. You can see tropical storm Juliet down there may bring some precipitation to California, but yeah, there is our show out there starting to look a bit like a cinnamon bun with the monsoon moisture in place across the Pacific Northwest. So hopefully we can squeeze some rainfall out of here for portions of places west of the Cascades and maybe even for those lightning lovers, we'll get some thunderstorms maybe as this continues to pivot up as we go through the next couple of days. And then the more widespread potential exists right out here off over the Pacific Ocean. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. I may do another stream here later on or another video later on <clears throat> i attempted a live stream last night but apparently i don't have control of that just yet but that will be coming in the next 10 days or so so anyway cross your fingers that that all gets worked out if you guys didn't know i was hacked and i'm still recovering from it but it looks like i have control of the channel again now so anyway um click like and subscribe we'll do this all again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then